Today we're going to look at how to integrate RAD CoverFlow with the ListBox control. RAD CoverFlow is part of the Telerik RAD controls for Silverlight WPF control suite for .NET XAML development. In this video we're going to show how easy it is to integrate RAD CoverFlow with other controls. This demo covers integration with a ListBox control to bind to the selected index. Let's go ahead and jump inside of Visual Studio 2010 and get started. So here we are once again inside of Visual Studio 2010. I'm just going to go File, New, Project. I'm going to select Visual C Sharp, Silverlight, and then RAD Control Silverlight Application. And I want to go ahead and I'm going to give this the name of RAD CoverFlow ListBox TTV, and I'm going to press OK. On the next screen here, we're going to host the Silverlight application in a new website. We're also going to be using Silverlight version 5. So we can press OK there and underneath components we're going to scroll down just a tad here and we're going to place a check on telerik.windows.controls.navigation. We're going to go ahead here and press finish and Visual Studio will begin spinning up our new Silverlight 5 project. Once Silverlight 5 our project is finished spinning up we can look underneath our references here and scroll down just a tad and you'll see Telerik.windows.controls and Telerik.windows.controls.navigation have automatically been added to this project for us. We can scroll up a tad and we can see that our Telerik XML namespace has also been added for us. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go into my main page .xaml.cs and I'm going to add a class called data items. So I'm just going to put this down here at the end. So we have a class called data items and we have a URI that's image source and then a string for name, description, and country. And then as you can see here these are just typical properties. So we'll go ahead and I'll collapse that branch and come back up and I'm going to add a method in here called get country and I'm going to be passing a city name. So we're going to set the country to null and then we have a simple switch statement that's just going to return the country. And finally I'm going to need to add in some dummy data. So this dummy data is going to be contained inside of our list box. So I'm just going to paste in some code here and scroll back up and we can see that we have a list of our data items. It's just a new list. Then we have a temp data item and we are setting this to a new data item. We're giving it an image source description name and country. Then of course we're adding that to our list data item. And if we scroll on down you'll see we're just adding multiple locations to our list. And at the very end here we are setting our data context to our list data item. So the next thing that we need to do is actually add in some images since they're pointing to them in this URI. So I'm going to begin by adding a new folder to my project and this is just going to be called images and then I'm going to right click add existing item paste in a location of where I have some images. I'm going to select all of them and then finally I'm going to hit add and you can see that they've been added to my project. Next up we need to go back to our main page .xaml. This is where we're going to add our list box and our rad cover flow. First thing that I'm going to need to do though is to paste in a user control resources that I've already built. So I just pasted that in and I'm going to scroll back up and we're going to talk about this. So to begin with we have our user control dot resources and then I'm setting a couple of styles here. So our cover flow item background I'm using a linear gradient brush and I'm just changing the styling here. So if I scroll down just a tad you'll see I have another linear gradient brush that the key is set to cover flow item border brush. If we scroll down just a tad we'll see that we're now setting the control template for our list box item. So we have a border and then inside of that border we're going to have an image that's going to be binding to our image source. 
and we're defining image source in our main page.xaml.cs right here. So we go back to our main page.xaml. We'll just scroll down just a tad and we'll see we have another style set up. And this is going to be a key of listbox style of the target type of listbox. And inside of this, the thing that we're going to want to pay attention to here is that we have an image this binding of course to our image source. We're just going to head and adding in an effect here which is a drop shadow effect that's built into system.windows.media.effects. Then we have a simple stack panel that's going to give us the name and the country and then finally a text box that's going to give us the description inside of our list box. So we're closing out a couple of tags here and then we are setting our item container style of a list box item. We're setting the width and then here we're actually setting the border thickness and then the padding. So once that's all in place we can come down to our grid and underneath our grid we're also going to paste in a code snippet here and we're going to just scroll back up to the top. We're first setting uh, column definitions where you can see here in the designer window this is the list box and then this is going to be the cover flow. When they select on a list box item, it's going to automatically scroll to that index in the rad cover flow. Next, we're just setting up some decoration borders. So we're setting up a border dot background. We're using a linear gradient brush. And then here we have a rectangle, and we're using a rectangle dot fill and then another linear gradient brush. Finally, we can put all of this to work by adding a list box, giving it a name. We're setting the style that we defined earlier. The item source is just going to be binding to our data context. But the thing to note here is that the selected index is binding to the selected index of the element name of cover flow. The mode, of course, is going to be set to two-way, and we're giving it a width. And if we look inside of our cover flow here, you can see we're giving it a name, we're setting an offset, placing it in the proper grid.row and grid.column. The item source is also by. And then we're setting just a few other properties that we discussed in part two of the series. So if we go ahead and we run the application, then you'll see we have our list box here. So our list box, it contains a mini image here. And then, of course, the name. And this one, in this case, it's Paris, France. And then just a quick description. Remember, this is binding to the selected index of our RAD cover flow. So I've selected the first one, but it's already on the first one. So we can select London, England. And our London, England selected index of RAD cover flow is displayed for us. So again, thank you for watching this series. And please tune in to tv.telerik.com for more videos and check out blogs.telerik.com for the latest news and announcements.